Hello there everyone, first thoughts on today's budget, it is the 15th of March and the Chancellor has just announced his first for him, Jeremy Hunt, his first budget, spring 2023. Now, as is the case with a lot of these budgets these days, everything gets leaked. It starts off the week before, maybe the weekend before in the Sunday papers, politicians do the rounds on the chat shows. And so by the time we get to the Wednesday, when the budget normally always is, we already know pretty much most of the headline is that's going to be in there. But uh, as always, I like to go through the uh, the red book that is published on the Treasury's website just to have a look at the detail, devil's in the detail, look at the smaller print, see if there's any surprises in there that we weren't al alerted to when the Chancellor stood up in the house. Um, so I've just written down um, a, lot of, a lot of stuff here, which I will share with you. The first thing I wrote down, only because it is my hobby, my passion is... Uh, swimming is the sport that I do. And he announced 60 million support for pools, council pools specifically, which is great news. A lot of them threatened with closing because of the increase in the energy costs. So 60 mil for pools. I think it's terrific. First thing I wrote down. So there you go. Right. What else have we got? Oh, yeah. Debt. The debt figures. I mean, this just eye watering amount. So our national debt right now stands at two and a half trillion pounds. Can you imagine that? Two and a half trillion. That is 99% of gross domestic product. So the value of everything that we make, that we produce, goods, services, everything that we as a society um, put out, our GDP, the debt is exactly that. 99% of that. I mean, it's just incredible. So you know, he's, tackling, he's put it, coming up with ideas to get the debt down, but it's just a huge amount. I mean, basically, to put it into perspective, the tax take a year is about 900 billion. And 100 billion of that goes on paying debt, servicing the debt. I mean, it's just, I mean, so that's like a ninth of all our tax take goes into pay off um, servicing the debt um, and the interest payments. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, anyway, what about other economic indicators? So inflation. Now, the good news is that the Bank of England, the Office of Budget Responsibility, they all concur pretty much and say, look, we've turned the corner on inflation, which has been an absolute nightmare for, for so many months now. It peaked um, around about 11 uh, percent. And what the OBR has said, remember, this is the independent body that sort of proofreads all the government's forecasts and says, yeah, this isn't baloney. This is we concur with this. They're saying, look, in the year from the end of 2022 to the end of 2023, inflation will go from 10.7% to 2.9%, which is terrific. That actually does transpire. So in that one year to the end of this year that we're in, 2023, it's going to drop to 29 And the average for this uh calendar year for 2023 will be 6.1% inflation, but it will drop to below three at the end of 2023. Well, that would be terrific if that happened. And then interestingly enough, this caught my eye. This was the OBR extending their forecast beyond this year for the next three, four, five years. And they reckon that 2024, which, you know, is only nine months away, for all of that year, inflation will only be 0.9%, so less than 1%. Um, that's incredible. When you think of this high inflation that we've got now, and it's just, I mean, that would be superb. And then get this, in 2025 until halfway through 2026, inflation forecasted to be zero, um, nil. And then coming back to their target rate of 2%, it's always been the Bank of England's target rate, 2% for years and years, decades, 2%. So they reckon we'll get back to 2% in 27, 28 but I mean, to have an inflation of zero, I can't quite get my head around as to why it would actually go that low to zero in, in 2025, 26. But there you go. That's what these boffins are forecasting. What else? EPG. This is the energy price guarantee where the government's basically said, look, you know, we know you're all getting stung for extra energy bills, but we're going to cap that. Um, that two and a half thousand pounds was due to expire around about now, and the government have said today that they will extend it for another three months. So that support at that two and a half grand level extended to 30th of June, 2023. Productivity. Now, productivity in Britain is a big problem. We basically are not productive compared to our, our peers in the Western world. So apparently, we are 
Productivity wise, 17, one seven percent weaker than the productivity figures for France, Germany and the USA. So what do we do? So the government have said, right, four pillars to tackle this, specifically the four E's, employment, education, enterprise and everywhere. So basically getting more people in work. There's a big problem at the moment since the pandemic. A lot of people, particularly uh, my sort of age, um, uh, over 50s, 50 to 64, people who are older than 50, but really um, not. Uh, below the below the uh, you know the what do you want to call it regular retirement age for want of a better phrase who have just said look we've had enough we don't want to, we don't want to keep working for whatever reason they can afford to must have done well to save enough to afford to but listen that's that's up for them but the chancellor said look this contributes to a lack of productivity that all these people are oh, silver surfers are uh, have retired from the workforce to so to encourage them to get back this is one of the four e's the four pillars get them back and i'll come on to talk about what exactly they're going to do education committed to increasing education more opportunities enterprise um in, introducing enterprise zones and various other things and everywhere the fourth e and that's all about leveling up and make sure that it's not just the south that benefits from any attempts to increase productivity in uk so the four E's there, employment, education, enterprise and everywhere to boost productivity in the UK. So childcare, one of these again, that was trailblazed in the media before 30 free hours, um, 33 hours a week to help uh, the childcare costs, which apparently are already available to um, three and four year olds. But that will be extended from kids from nine months to three years that's going to be phased in over the next few years so that's that's um a big commitment by the government i'm looking at the costings that cost is going to cost about five billion a year to do that but uh but no very welcome indeed again all about helping to get the product it all comes back to the central theme productivity getting people back to work because they um you know that they, they may they got the child care contributed for uh, helped by the government get people back into work, increase productivity. Now, corporation tax, 25%. 25%. We knew that was coming in. We, there was talk about backlash from the Tory backbenchers. And, and was it really going to come in? Could they convince the Chancellor to do a U-turn? No, they couldn't. It's, it's in. It's starting from uh, two weeks' time. Corporation tax going up to... 25%. So what Jeremy Hunt has done to appease big business, because the, the point is that big business is saying, look, people won't want to come to the UK to set up shop. Multinationals will go elsewhere. They might go to the Republic of Ireland or elsewhere, not the UK at 25%. So Jeremy Hunt said, look, I'm going to bring in this new regime. It's called expensing capital expenditure. And what it is, it means immediate write-off for capital equipment. Now, a lot of big you know, FTSE 100 companies are capital intensive in that they spend a fortune on uh, equipment and machinery and plant and everything else. And last year, in last year's autumn statement, they already announced that there will be a million pounds, a million pounds that you can have as an immediate tax write off. And that will affect 99% of the businesses. I mean, it'll be enough for 99% of businesses. But for the 1% who are Mega multinationals are really going to come a cropper with this 25%. I'm not, mind you, I'm not saying that the smaller individuals won't as well, smaller companies, of course they will, but to appease the big boys, what the Chancellor says is, says, look, assuming you're spending millions and millions of pounds on capital equipment that's going to sit on your balance sheet, I don't know if you're in the mining industry, if you're a listed miner and you've got to spend, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds on, on machines, you'll get immediate tax write-off. Not just the one million cap that's, that's in there now, unlimited. For three years, this is going to apply from 2023 to 2026. So that's um, obviously a welcome thing, but it still goes, you know, the fact that that CT rate is going from 19 to 25% um, is still a hefty increase. And like I said, this expensing of capital allowances will certainly um, go to, it's, it's aimed at the larger companies. For the smaller companies, that million pounds should do very nicely. 
Most SMEs aren't even going to get anywhere near that. But still, SMEs struggling to go from 19% to 25%. It really is a big tax hike. Uh, and of course, the super deduction, the 130%, that has ended. Oh, sorry, will end in two weeks' time. Um, so what else have we got here? What else have we got? Um, simplifying the customer experience at HMRC. Now, if any of you tried calling HMRC in the helpline, you can be stuck on there for ages. I mean, often over an hour. Uh, and the government realized that and they're trying to make things a lot more easier. And basically having all your tax affairs that you need to speak to HMRC about under one wrapper online. Now, actually, that's already in place for, for businesses. You're, you're a business, you've got your own company, you can look at one place, one website to see all your corporation tax, your pay as you earn, your VAT. Um, so, but apparently they're rolling this out to, to, to individuals as well. And I actually thought the individual tax account was pretty good. So I don't know what they're going to do specifically, but that's going to come in. Enterprise zones. Now we've had enterprise zones rehashed for so many years. They've been around for 60 years in one various guise or another. Um, basically, it's it's it says, look, if you uh, open your business in one of these designated areas will make life easier for you by giving you certain tax breaks on stamp duty, on business rates, on capital allowances, um, various things. So the various parts of the UK have been designated new enterprise zones with the aim of encouraging direct investment in those areas. VAT and pharmaceuticals. Oh yeah, so nothing much in the VAT world other than the services provided by... Uh, staff employed by pharmacists extends the scope of medical provision. So if you're a doctor, you're a dentist, you don't add VAT to your services. Um, this will now be extended to pharmacists, apparently. So that's uh, good news for them. Now, one of the headline, um, one of the headlines about the pensions, lifetime allowance. So this is the amount that you can save in your pension pot at the point of which you crystallize your benefits, which means draw your pension and you won't get hit for tax. Currently, it's one, it was £1 million. Now, £1 million may seem like a lot, but if you've been a frugal saver and you've got, let's say you've got a hundred, 100 grand or so put away by the time you're 40 odd, if you've got a reasonable IFA looking after your pension pot, you should quite legitimately expect that pension, pension pot to double, say, every 10 years. So if you're starting off with 100, 150, it's going to double to 300 to 600. What my point is, you could quite easily breach the million pound allowance through no fault of your own, just for successfully investing it, even if you haven't put any money in it for donkey's years, in theory. So the reason that they're scrapping that million pounds and actually making it unlimited is to encourage, again, it comes back to the four pillars, the four E's, employment, getting people back to work to increase growth and productivity. So they're saying, look, a lot of these people coming back will be encouraged to come back because of these pension reliefs that they can now put in more into the pension and not get taxed on it when it comes when they come to take it. Same goes for the annual allowance. Now, this is the annual amount that you can put into your pension. Currently, £40,000 will be increasing to £60,000. So more can be put into the pension. Now, next one on this theme is called the MPAA, the Money Purchase Annual Allowance. And this says that if you've already started to take your pension over and above your tax-free lump sum, so your pension, you're drawing it, you're paying tax on it, but you may still have other business interests. Now, from a tax planning angle, putting corporate pension contributions in is a great way to get your corporation tax bill down. So let's say you got to an age... You've still got a business, you're an entrepreneur, you haven't retired as such, but you've started taking money from your private pension for whatever reason. You are previously limited to only be then then put 4,000 a year and get tax relief contributing into the pension or a separate pension. And that has increased today from 4,000 to 10,000. So if you've already started taking your pension or one of your pensions, you can still pay into a pension and get tax relief, but it's £10,000. Now, if you haven't already started taking your pension, that is going to be £60,000. So that is very uh, generous indeed. So just um, just an overview there on, on my initial thoughts of what was in today's budget. Um, I think, unfortunately, 
that the there was no U-turn on that corporation tax. I think it will really stifle um, a lot of growth. I mean, all, all this, all this, you know, talk of annual allowance, and everything else. Listen, that ain't going to do much in terms of promoting the growth. The, but having a low tax regime would have done. Um, you only have to look across the pond at how well the Republic of Ireland have done since they introduced 12.5% corporation tax. They've never looked back. And, the, and the, the, the economy has grown massively because of all the likes of the American tech firms who are based in Dublin because they pay low rates of tax. But that's the paradox. It, it's, it's because it's counterintuitive, but it does work. Economic theory says that the lower the tax rate, the more tax revenue you're going to generate because people are happy to pay that amount and it will boost productivity and you'll get more out of your out of the economy. Uh, but obviously the, the government don't seem to buy into that and they think that increasing the tax rates, the corporation tax rate is the way to go. I certainly do not. I'm an advocate of exactly what um, the Republic of Ireland have done and I think that the productivity will be increased had they slashed that headline corporation tax rate instead of increasing it um so so there you go so just uh, an overview there of today's budget the theme being how do we increase uk productivity and the four e's employment education enterprise and everywhere being the the cornerstone of what the the budget was all about but if you uh, you like this video and i hope you do please do subscribe and as always i'll see you soon